Today on the Star Trek Critic, the Enterprise visits a planet troubled with terrorism in the high ground. As usual, each episode starts with 100 points, taking away one point for each error, and we'll see what is left. This is one of the few times where the planet they're arriving at is dark. Look closely as this extra has to pull up his pants. Normally on Star Trek, the camera follows an extra across the set, but this time it's actually Data. The first point is lost when these stuntmen wait a second before being thrown over by the blast. Another point lost. This is a Starfleet medical mission. There should be more Enterprise personnel in the area. If recreational shore leave has been prohibited, why are they sitting out in the open? Here is proof. Picard mentioned other away teams are down here, so you should be able to see one or two of them. One thing they really don't cover enough of is the backstory. Most likely the terrorists have nothing to do with the official Ansada government. Beverly says, put that away, I'm a doctor. That could be kinky in another scene. This would be a good time for all the other Starfleet personnel to help out. One point lost here, Worf would not go get the bandages. He would have somebody else get the bandages for him. And here's why he wouldn't leave, though one of the guys who helps is actually one of the bad guys. This guard actually says the Ansada are madmen. He's right about this terrorist love a one-two punch technique. One point is lost for Beverly not beaming the patient directly to sickbay. Occasionally I use who's on first references. Here, Beverly says who is more than one person, who are not here. Data reports the incident as vulnerable. Neither Picard or Riker consider beaming up the injured party, so minus one more point. The transporter operator says, I number one. Beverly is being stubborn. Neither Picard or Riker have the backbone to stand up to the doctor. I don't want to be in the transporter room to greet her. Data says, I number two. The terrorists come out of nowhere. The people running in front of the police to block their view could also be terrorists. And then Beverly disappears. Aww. Data and Worf are like, well shit, Picard's going to give us an ass whooping now. The background stars are not moving, and now they are, so minus one more point. Ironically, they act like they've never seen this before. Riker wants some way to stalk her. Data suggests her communicator has been deactivated or shielded. I don't think they have the technology to shield a communicator. Worf puts Riker on blast. Down on the surface, one point is lost for opening credits six minutes into the show. Back on the Enterprise, Wesley says, Deanna, now that mom is gone, let's fool around. I've always dreamed of you making a man out of me. One point is lost for these continents not having names. They're just called Eastern or Western. Now he calls Wesley the shortstop. Then he has Wesley use his expertise to save his mom. Picard sits down and says, Deanna, now that Wesley is gone, how about you and I do the nasty? One point lost for the captain and first officer on the surface in a terrorist area. It should have been Worf, not Picard. Devos hands him an inverter, then asks for Federation technology, but Picard says, uh, yeah, we can't do that. But Devos is truly burned out at her job. Gates McFadden, who claims the show is sexist, is in a bondage scene. Yes! Flynn is a bit of a jerk, and Beverly says she needs a doctor. It turns out the first baseman told Flynn all about her. Flynn calls the Federation the enemy for bringing medical supplies to help people he's killing. What an asshole. One point is lost for not showing Beverly trying to use her communicator. It might work after all, we just don't know. Why did she tell him she has a son? Probably nervous. The Ansada terrorists live in Fraggle Rock with the Doozers. Beverly tells Flynn what her favorite original series episode is. Flynn takes credit in killing people and then taking the Federation medical supplies to help keep those people alive. What a douchebag. Just like on Earth, this terrorist organization is very small but has a tangled web of assistance. Devos talks about how rough the situation in her job is, while Riker is wondering if he's going to get laid tonight. Terrorism is bad, and most of the time it just puts the people they claim to represent in a worse position. Dr. Crusher's report, Man, you people are all messed up. Just what the heck have you been doing? Flynn says the third baseman gave him this cool new gadget called the Inverter. So far, this is the only episode that talks about dimensional shifting. And what would happen if they got stuck in the other dimension? Beverly tells Flynn he's a little distorted too. Flynn says, I'm from Minnesota, don't you know? Wesley's on to something and decides to play May I with Jordy. May I? Mm. No! <laughs> Wesley realizes it's interdimensional travel and Data says, Captain, can I beat the living shit out of that genius kid for coming up with it before me? I'm the smartest android in the universe. And Picard says, yeah, he really did make you look like a fool, didn't he? The men of the planet all have a white stripe in their hair because of one peculiar trait. I see dead people. This is another thing terrorists do is to recruit kids to do all their dirty work. Then it makes the police arresting the kids look like the bad guys. 
Finn didn't get a career as an artist, so became a terrorist, like when Castro tried to be a baseball star, then became the communist dictator of Cuba. And he's got a very distorted look on American history. Just like a terrorist on Earth, Finn distorts history and places blame on other people to make them feel guilty and convinces them the key is to follow him like the corrupt leader that he is. If the Anzada government is actually pushing for independence, his terrorist actions are actually getting in the way of that because it's all about him. Riker is wrong in offering to negotiate. The only thing they should offer is a table so the two factions can sit down and hammer out an agreement. Besides, offering to negotiate will encourage the terrorists to do more kidnappings for more negotiations. Debo says, Riker, I agree with the narrator. That was a stupid thing to do. Needless to say, Riker will not be getting laid tonight. Data works on tracing the dimensional jumps so he can do a one-up on Wesley. Data wants to collect enough data. He's so full of himself. Here comes the biggest mistakes of the show, and they're big. One point is lost for Data saying terrorism is effective. One point lost for calling the Mexican War with Spain acts of terrorism when it was a real war. And one point lost mentioning Irish unification in 24, which is now. That really pissed off the British and quite a bit of Irish too, I'm sure. When this show aired, the Irish Republican Army was much more active than it is now. The last thing you want is a TV show promoting terrorism or copycats. Offering a table is all you should do. The card calls those questions about mankind. That's sexist. And anytime Data says something stupid, they just say, you're only being human. Flynn uses misinformation to confuse Beverly on what's going on outside the caves. Here's proof that he's deranged. He'd rather destroy the Enterprise than talk. The Federation might back a peaceful and sought a government. You never know. Flynn talks about his son dying in detention. That's sad, but it could be his son was a total dirtbag too. And this is the last thing you should ever say when you're being held hostage. Back on the Enterprise, the terrorists choose the male extra, but not the female extra. That's sexist. Beta says the force fields won't work. That means the shields probably don't work either. Deanna says she can't pinpoint it. In this episode, you learn Jordy can call for help and leap at the same time. Picard wants to separate the saucer, but the producers say it's not in the budget. Terrorists plant a Cylon device on the warp core. Even in emergency situations, you still have time to perform the Picard maneuver. Deanna is smart enough to know what he's doing. She just panicked for effect. One point is lost for Worf not shooting right away, and then Worf gets shot in the balls. Look quick, Deanna's on Picard's left. Now she's on his right, so minus one point. And that was really stupid of Picard. Minus one point here, Deanna runs past Worf's phaser. You need to grab Worf's phaser and start shooting. Now they got the biggest bargaining ship in the Federation, and Beverly's thinking, that was really stupid of you to jump on him, you know. Riker is really naive when it comes to terrorists, isn't he? Engineering's a disaster. Jordy would not be back up on the bridge so soon, so minus one more point. Picard and Beverly discuss doing the nasty while the guard isn't looking. They got nothing else to do. One point lost here for not even trying to use Picard's communicator to see if it will work. Picard says he will be the judge of what is reasonable. How is jumping on a terrorist with an armband transporter reasonable? And this one is probably not true. Beverly is suffering from the Stockholm Syndrome. Picard says, Beverly, you're suffering from the Stockholm Syndrome. Beverly says, I know, I understand that. Picard and Flynn shout insults at each other. Flynn calls out the Federation for sitting around doing nothing. Of course, if they did get involved, he would then call them imperialist colonizers. Flynn has Picard five feet away from him. He has every opportunity to talk about mediating a truce, but he'd rather do more killing. Proof he's just a terrorist. If the Rutians and Anzada come to peaceful terms, he's just going to cause trouble elsewhere. And he doesn't want an honorable agreement. He just wants to take over the world. So instead of negotiating with Picard, he uses the inverter twice to negotiate with Deanna. That was stupid. Wesley pinpointed the base and Data's like, shit, that little brat beat me to it again. And 30 meters below ground shouldn't affect the communicators. Data says, I number three, and one point is lost for Riker leaving the ship because he's in command right now. Worf should have been the leader of the away team. Flynn has terrible social skills. He tells Beverly he might have to kill Picard. Then he gives her drawings he made of her. Just a reminder, in Star Trek, they try. In Star Wars, they do. Beverly goes off on Flynn. Yes! This is definitely the type of role Gates McFadden wanted on the show. Beverly then says, you know Flynn, you actually suck as a leader. Flynn is at a loss of words, then the terrorist says, I don't want you to fear me. One point lost here, when you beam down into the hostile area, you should be in a circle facing out. Picard believes he's the third baseman. Beverly shows Picard the drawings. Jean-Luc says, 
hey, we can use this to our advantage. Then Beverly says, John Luke, there is no way in hell I'm going to sleep with him to get out of here. You never learn why she wanted to tell Picard, like that Wesley is really his son. Look at this. The second the lights go out, these terrorists trying to steal all the money. Another point is lost for not sending down another six guards. One point lost for not stunning everybody and punching them instead. Then Riker performs the Picard maneuver. I bet he feels macho now. And there goes Flynn. Aww. Riker says, you didn't have to kill him. Then Devin says, well you were just standing there doing nothing waiting for Flynn to kill Picard so you could take his place. Like the opportunistic bastard that you are. You really don't know shit about terrorism, do you? Maybe you should look up Earth history once in a while. Devin calls it an imperfect solution for an imperfect world. Isn't that what the Borg Queen said? Now comes a little kid with a gun, but Dr. Crusher talks him out of it. Riker tries to mansplain his goody-two-shoes view of the universe to Devin. In reality, he's just trying to get in her pants. And you can tell by the expression on her face that she is on to him. Data didn't even let Wesley go down to meet his mom on the transporter room. How rude. A nice screenshot here of Wesley rolling his eyes. They have a wonderful mother-son reuniting moment. Then Beverly says, Wesley, just what did you do with Deanna while I was gone? The last point is lost for leaving orbit right away, because they're probably going to stay around for a little bit longer. So, who were the Anzata? Chris Petit had 27 screen credits, including Baywatch and Don't Tell the Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Unfortunately, he had a drug overdose at the age of 24. Mark Buckland went to directing and won an Emmy for My Name is Earl. Richard Cox has 100 screen credits including Eight is Enough, Jack, and Four Years on Loving. Carrie Keen, with her perfect smile and green eyes, is Canadian, with 80 screen credits including Incubus, 90210, and The X-Files. The Anzada terrorist cell has been rounded up, which means less random arrests and harassment for them. Hopefully they will get peaceful representation next that doesn't believe in going on killing sprees on their behalf, which gets them all into trouble. The High Ground, an excellent episode that covers the problems of terrorism, gets a score of 80. Yeah! Thanks for viewing. Be sure to leave comments below, click that like button, the share button, the subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon.